Hey, and we're back. I'm Paul with Bike Skins. Today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to set up Bike Skins Vinyls print files. So when we set up a print file, these have to go to a printer, and normally that's a constraint width of 52 inches. So I'm going to show you how I actually take the pieces and set those up in a file. So here I have the layout graphic, and you can see I have some lettering here on the tank. That's actually reversed, and that's kind of a secret shortcut. I actually don't do a left and right hand side. I just normally do one side and then take the pieces and flip them. And so what I do whenever I'm wanting to cut out a piece, I basically take the whole design like this. So here's all the layers. And I just select all those and do a copy. And then while they're still selected, go in and do a merge layer. And then that gives me a flat piece that I can cut the pieces from that's created right here. So basically um, I've got all the pieces set up in the actual print file and you can see the print file here. It's just a 52 inch wide piece set up at 150 dpi and then I have all my pieces in there. They've been copied from this so um, I haven't arranged those yet so now I'm going to show you um, kind of the copy process. So I've got all the pieces except for the front fender material so the way I normally do front fenders is because it's um, the shape and everything, I do those in one piece and it kind of works out good to take just a large square and sometimes if I want to change how that selection is, I can just fill it in and move it above my design there and also the motorcycle layer. And I normally just kind of line up along the forks kind of get that look in about like that it doesn't have to be precise depending on what the design is and so then I just hold down control and click on that layer and select it and so now I have a selection I can copy and for control C and then control V and paste it in here and that's kind of all I need for the front fender before we jump in here and start arranging things I want to show you one other thing too so this I've got a green outline layer that kind of helps me sometimes when I need to understand how to cut something, you know, that all the body works cut out. And so uh, sometimes you want to see what the whole graphic looks like. So here there's some squiggly lines up behind the tank. So if we take a look at these tank grabs right here, I just kind of airbrushed out that squiggly line because they're going to overlap and you don't want something like that to be weird in the seam. So that's just some considerations I look at. And then of course, another thing I look at too is sometimes I'll disable the mask and then look at the actual body contours. So where there's deep recesses like in here, this one's not really that deep. It goes in a couple inches, but on some bikes it goes in really deep. So you actually need to look at the contours to understand how deep or how far around the area do you need to trace you know can you get in there eight inches or something like that or are you going to have to go even deeper like 10 inches or something like that so it, that kind of varies okay so now let's go back to the print file and so you could arrange this horizontally i normally do it vertically and one thing it's kind of like playing uh tetris you're trying to figure out basically all these pieces are oddly shaped and if you don't arrange these in the print file you'll you'll wind up wasting a lot of material and this material is costly so arranging the pieces inside your print file that's known as nesting so nesting is something that printers know about and then also if you do any uh, CNC work or you're doing plasma cutting or laser cutting sometimes you'll do nesting now to my knowledge someone can comment if there is a nesting software for Photoshop or like a plug-in or something, but I haven't seen one. So um, what I normally do is just tuck in the square areas because that's where those go in. That's automatically going to be optimized. And then I tuck, fill in something there to kind of take up space. Now these don't have to be beside each other. So then what I normally do is move on to the biggest pieces because then it's going to be easier later to fill in with small pieces than if I just stacked in a bunch of small pieces and then wound up with areas that's not optimum for the big pieces, if that makes sense. So um, sometimes if there's a piece with a flat edge, I'll see where I can tuck that in there. I kinda, those normally 
help optimize space. And so to grab these quickly, you can select auto select here and just anything you click on will move. That can get annoying really quick when you're clicking on things you don't want to move. So what I do is uncheck that and if you hold down control, anything you click on while you press control, it'll jump to that layer. So that's, that's the layer you're selecting and moving. And then as you see me rotate stuff around, I'm just doing control T and then I just rotate it around. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the next big piece and fit that up in there just to kind of optimize the space so something like that and then once it gets close sometimes it's good to come in and and use the arrow keys to nudge it because you don't want to you don't really want to do overlap now like right here there's like a minute amount of overlap that much overlap's not really going to matter so that much overlap's not really going to matter all right so now i have another little side area to fill in let's sometimes pieces are skinnier one way than they are the other so rotating that around accordingly and so now we've got kind of medium and small pieces so that's that's kind of what you want to do you want to get those big pieces out of the way and then kind of work your way down because you have more options for how you arrange the pieces if you save the smaller pieces to last so sometimes if I see an angle like that, that looks like it works properly, I set that up in there. There we go. Another thing too is when you're working fast in Photoshop, you want all the shortcuts you can have. And so I always set the scroll wheel to be my zoom. So if you go to edit and if you go to preferences and then tools, there's an area here where it says zoom with scroll wheel. Always check that. And that's not by default, but it greatly seems time to be, especially when you're working with large files where you have to jump around a lot. If you're just working on portraits and stuff, doing your normal run-of-the-mill Photoshop stuff, you'd probably be okay with doing zoom a different way, but almost have to have that zoom to be able to work efficiently and fast. Okay, so now here's the part where you're starting to get into, or I'm starting to get into problem solving. So um this being out here leaving a white space out there is kind of make it where it's not it's not optimum it's not really gonna leave me an area i can feel so let's let's not divide out our area and so that looks like it's got a deep curve so yep that fits right in there and then let's nest this one with its long flat side against the flat side and that'll probably give me a lot of options for how to do this other trim piece. Yep, so it's got a little bit of area. I can fit that up in there. Rotate it just right. There we go. So now it's adjusted. And so the only thing I need to do is crop it. So by default, there's many different crop ones. I normally set it to ratio. And then of course you can just adjust the edge you need to go to. Now kind of snap into the bottom piece and that's what we want. Just double click the center and it'll crop it up. All right, so now's a good time to save. And after we've done all this, what I normally do is go back and label each individual piece. And that helps with the customer installation because, and what I'll just show you how I kind of do it. I'll do one of them. I normally just select black and then I go in here and create, have a normal font in black. And then I'm gonna just type front fender here. And let's see, there we go. I don't wanna, what I normally do too is anchor the bottom of the text at the area of the piece and that kind of makes it where if you have two pieces there side by side it'll be more clear where it needs to go. Okay so another thing I do too, this I do want to point this out, another thing I do is I, I normally put the text oriented in the area that makes it readable where it's upright. So this is a tank piece, this is the bottom of the tank right through here and this is the top. So what I would do, I wouldn't put it like right here cause that would make it be odd. You'd, you wouldn't know, you'd have to guess which way is bottom. So what I normally do is orient the text in the way that the piece is gonna go on the bike. So I'll just tuck that in right there for clarity. And so I used to not do this. Maybe, maybe like five years ago, I used to not label the pieces, but now I label the pieces and it kind of makes it easier for everybody. Anyway, that's how I set up a print file. Hope you enjoyed it.